when I say the Axis powers, most of you will think Germany, Italy or Japan. But there are also lesser known Axis powers such as Slovakia, Bulgaria, Romania, Croatia and Hungary. Did you know that Hungary occupied some parts of the former Yugoslav Kingdom after it was overthrown by the German-led invasion of the country? This here is the story of the forgotten Hungarian occupation of parts of Yugoslavia. Keep watching. Due to the Treaty of Trianon, which was signed in 1920, Hungary lost much of its territory, leaving the population and the politicians resentful. And the main aim of the Hungarian politicians during the interwar period was the redrawing of the old borders. But this was not going to be easy. Hungary was surrounded by larger states such as Czechoslovakia, Romania and the Kingdom of Yugoslavia which formed the Little Entente which was backed by France to keep the country in check. Now Hungary made an alliance with Germany and when Hitler rose to power revision of the old borders seemed possible. Now Hitler stressed that 100% revision simply was not realistic however when Germany was overturning the status quo in the second half of the 1930s things seemed to be possible and that happened during the first and second Vienna award 1938-1940 where Hungary gained territory from Czechoslovakia and Romania. In November 1940 Hungary joined the Axis powers. Despite signing a treaty with Yugoslavia the treaty of eternal friendship Germany pressed Hungary into participating in the Axis invasion of Yugoslavia and this did not sit well with Hungary and Hungary made clear that it would only participate if victory was assured. In other words, if the Yugoslav state would disintegrate and Croatia would secede. And this happened shortly after the Germans set foot on Yugoslav soil, Croatia seceded from the Yugoslav kingdom and this was the green light for the Hungarian invasion of the country. That happened on the 11th of April. During the short campaign, which lasted just 12 days, the Hungarian army suffered 126 dead and 241 wounded. Hungary took control and annexed two contiguous areas of Yugoslavia. I hope you enjoyed the video so far. I like making stuff like this, but YouTube itself, well, not really. Topics like this won't get that many views. But the point is, I make a part-time income via YouTube. But yeah, with videos like this, I won't get that much. Personally, I don't care because I love making videos like this, but I also, you know, need to earn a living. So if you can support me, please do so. You can do that via Patreon, via PayPal, or via Super Thanks. You can all find the information below the video. And let's continue with the episode. A part the Hungarians occupied was the Slovene area of Prekmurje and the Croatian area of Međimurje, which had around 8% of Hungarians living in it. Hungary also gained control of Bačka and Baranja, which had around 30% of Hungarians living in it. The occupation started with violence, as the Hungarians were beset by stereotypical images and prejudices against the Serbian population as the text of a leaflet that was handed out to Hungarian soldiers read. As it is known, the Serbs throughout their history have been a conspiratorial people prone to rebellion, violence, even bloody solutions. The Serb is a typical conspirator with an inclination to organize secret organizations and terrorist associations. In Sombor and Sobotica, Chetnik forces within the Royal Yugoslav Army ambush Hungarian troops killing several of them. Hungarian Lieutenant General Elemer Gorondi Novak issued the order that people caught with weapons or munition were immediately shot dead. Now interesting enough, the Hungarians had a different approach than the Germans. According to Wehrmacht regulations, the Wehrmacht was not allowed to play the role of judge. Prisoners had to be delivered to the competent institutions, secret military police, field gendarmerie or the secret service. Now do notice that these regulations often were not followed upon but what is certain is that the Hungarian soldiers had more freedom in playing the role of judge. Orders of Gorondi Novak permitted the taking of hostages and executions if necessary. Public executions occurred in Zombor as well as Jabatka. Now according to Yugoslav sources over 3500 Yugoslav people were shot dead 
in the uh, Hungarian invasion of the country. Hungarian sources mention 1120 deaths. Apart from executions, the Hungarians demanded tax money of the Jewish population of Novi Sad and Zombach. Major General Ferenc Bajor was court-martialed for this, but this was due to the fact that he spent the money himself. The Hungarian occupation authorities, they classified the population in two different groups. Those who lived in the area before 1918 and those who entered it in the interwar years. The influx was seen as the so-called Yugoslavization or Serbanization as they called it, which had to be undone by measures of Magyarization. Around 10,000 people were expelled to Serbia, Croatia or Montenegro. Now the Hungarians, they had plans to deport 150,000 of them, but the Germans, they halted this, although the Hungarians continued to expel people in smaller numbers. Tens of thousands were sent gradually. Land was given to Hungarian people. They established the old 1918 administrative divisions of local government with the difference that the new officials were appointed rather than elected. They encouraged the activity of Hungarian political parties and patriotic organizations in the drive to magyarize desirable elements of the population which conversely meant discrimination against Serbs and Croats. In education and cultural institutions similar discrimination against Serbs, Croats and Jews took place. Also, Germans were initially discriminated against, but when this became known to Hitler, he pressured the Hungarian government to do something about this. And policies were changed. The Germans soon came to enjoy the status of almost a state within a state. They were allowed to appoint their own officials in towns with predominantly German population. In the second half, of 1941, resistance broke out. Initially, small in scale, the Hungarian occupation authorities responded by executing repressive measures. The harshest action occurred in January 1942, came known as the Novi Sad Raid or the Novi Sad Massacre. And the monument you see behind me is dedicated to the victims. And these were around 3,500 people, mostly Serbs and Jews, who were killed. Thousands were robbed, imprisoned, otherwise maltreated or taken to concentration camps. The Bachka partisan movement was never strong in the first place as the area was very flat and therefore was not ideal for guerrilla resistance. Also do note that the South Slav population only amounted to one third of the total population in the area. The Chetniks did have an underground organization but showed little activity. Collaboration with the Hungarians did occur. There were local businessmen, but also politicians and landowners who wanted to protect their own interests and therefore collaborated with Hungary. The Jews of the occupied territories were subjected to forced labor by the Hungarian authorities. Over 15,000 were sent to labor camps within Hungary and some had to perform labor tasks for the Hungarian army on the Eastern Front. Speaking of, the Hungarians suffered huge losses on the Eastern Front. This became known as the disaster on the Don. Then the Hungarian government wanted to exit the war. It made attempts to reach the Western Allies by the end of 1943. The Germans became aware of this and took control of the country in March 1944. Regent Miklos Horthy was allowed to remain as head of state. The Germans superimposed their rule over the Hungarian annexed Yugoslav areas. Now Horthy continued to contact the Allies and managed to reach an armistice with the Soviets when Soviet forces were well within the borders of Hungary. When the Germans learned about this, they overthrew Horthy and installed Ferenc Salashi, the leader of the Hungarian Arrow Cross Party, which was the Hungarian Fascist Party. Little could be done to stop the Soviet onslaught, and ethnic Germans from Bachka and Baranya were evacuated to Austria in October 1944. By the end of that month, Soviet, Bulgarian and partisan forces had cleared the area of German troops. The areas of Prekmurje and Mejimurje were taken by Bulgarian forces. What followed were purges and many ethnic Germans and Hungarians fell victim to this. An estimated 55,000 were killed in these communist purges. If you want to learn about the Royal Hungarian Army, click here. I want to thank you for watching and best wishes from Novi Sad, Serbia.